first some coffee. Damn good coffee. And hot. Hey folks and friends, uh, welcome to this little new video of mine where I talk about um, my recording process, the reasons um, why I do the stuff I do um, and what's so special about my process and my approach. Uh, when it comes to drum cover videos or making music in general. So my complete recording chain, um, once and for all, now is uh, I'm going to show you uh, in detail. So first of all, I have this acoustic shell set right um, behind me. This is a basics custom shell set, which I converted completely using our drums trigger and mesh heads from different companies. I used Jobiki and Roland cymbals. All of the drums and pads are then connected to my Roland TD20X drum module. The drum module then uh, is connected via a MIDI cable to a Roland Quad Capture audio interface. The audio interface then is connected via USB cable with my iMac late 2013. Uh, on my iMac, I run Reaper as a DAW, and within Reaper, I use a drumless track, of course, to record to. And um, as a virtual instrument VST, I use mainly Superior Drummer, sometimes Easy Drummer, or Stephen Slate Drums, or Addictive Drums too. Um, for the mixing, I use plugins from Waves, um, Sound Toys, Kush Audio, Stephen Slate, Tune Track as well. So I have quite a lot of um, plugins where I can use, which I've purchased over the time. So that's my complete recording chain. Now, the thing that I do when I record is I have a different approach as you um, and this is one of uh, the reason I want to talk about um, why I do the things um, the way I do. So most of the tracks I use, the drumless tracks, are not the original tracks. Um, I use um, mainly a source which is called karaokeversion.com. I will post a link in the description box below. Um, the, the issue with those versions are that those are not recorded or sung by the original artist, which for me is okay, but I know sometimes this is the reason I get dislikes um, or some comments that people showing me that they don't like the version because it's not sung by the original artist. Where the problem here is that I know there are a ton of drumless tracks out there, um, like the original recording where the drums were removed or someone got um, the tracks from the recording for whatever reasons, um, which is fine. The problem is that um, you get more likely some issues with copyright issues. Um, and not all of the tracks I want to play to are available without the drums. And here's the first step. I never, never do a drum cover where the original drums are included. This has several reasons. Mainly, um, it's a mixing thing, because my approach when it comes to mixing and making drum cover is not to show like how good the drums sound. Of course, this is um, the reason I buy all those drum sample packs, but um, to mix the drums um, that they fit in the mix, so it's like a more or less professional sounding recording. But as long as the original drums are in the song, you get two big issues that I want to avoid. First of all, your drums will never sit properly in the mix because your drums have to be louder than the original drums um, for the reason that the people or the audience um, wants to hear your drums. So st the second thing is that it limits creativity because as long as you hear the original drums and you want to do your own interpretation of the song, uh, it's sometimes hard because um, let's say you decide not to play a certain fill between a pre-chorus and a chorus, for instance, but the original drummer on the drum um, on the original drums did. So you hear this uh, fill going on while you're just playing um, your standard beat or vice versa. So um, it really limits the way how you play the song um, and the mixing got really difficult. Um, this is a question of frequency ranges. I mean, you cannot just stack up your own drums to the existing track where the drums are already recorded. It's really difficult. So that's the reason I use drumless tracks first and foremost. And the reason I use the versions from karaokeversion.com is that you have access not only to the drumless track completely, but to 
individual tracks so you can uh, mix the vocals the keys the, the guitars all the tracks that we used on the recording you can mix on your own so you get a better chance to create a mix that sounds professional where the drums sit in the mix because sometimes you need to do some adjustments maybe on the guitars or on the vocals to sit your snare better in the mix or the kick drum or the, or the drum sounds in general the problem though with every drumless track is that they are already mixed and mastered and mainly they are available in mp3 format which is a problem because mp3 is already a compressed version of the song so it's sometimes it's um, difficult to increase volume or to, to do uh, too much processing on the drum tracks um, it ends up messy i mean it really depends on your ambition um, and the sound you have in your head when it comes to professional or almost professional sounding drum tracks it's sometimes an issue to play to already mix and master tracks um, because as i said mp3 is a difficult format but um, that's not the deal or the purpose of my video. Um, when it comes to the samples I use, um, and I own quite a lot of them, I've purchased almost 40, 50 different expansion packs over the last three or four years while I do this, because I just love the variety of the sounds. Um, technology nowadays, the special samples, um, are so versatile and they are, give you like open so much flexibility and creativity having access to all those fantastic sounding drums um, spanning from the 1920s where I have a sample from a Lugby Black Beauty from the 1920s so 100 year old snare drum up to modern drums like the DW or Mapex recorded in multi-million dollar studios um, so um, it's, an, it's an endless world of options uh, which I really appreciate but what I do is, um, though all those softwares come along with presets or pre-configured configurations, some of the drum samples like Steven Slate drums or Addicted drums are pre-processed more or less, so they almost fit um, right off the box into a certain sound. But that's not what I do. I always choose the hard way. Uh, I, that's the reason I mainly use Superior Drummer, because the drum uh, samples are really, really raw. Um, I route them out to my DLW just as if I had recorded the drums in a studio and all the work the mixing engineer has to do anyway when you record your drums. Like you have issues with face cancellations, you have issues with EQ and compression. Um, so um, I could have my, uh, do my life, have my life easier by choosing presets or the module sounds or all of the stuff or pre-processed sounds. But that's, not, that's the way I want because my... My drum channel, my YouTube channel, is for me a practice field. I force myself to do all the way every time to get better at mixing, not better at drumming because I'm a more or less sloppy self-taught drummer and this is no fishing for compliments. I know I have my limitations when it comes to drumming, but that's not the purpose of my channel. My channel is to pick a song which I want to mix and to drum. Uh, and when it comes to the choice of the samples, um, especially looking at one of my last or two of my last covers I recently uploaded, which was Leona Lewis' Run. <laughs> and Set Fire to the Rain from Adele. Both versions I was not really satisfied with because um, I knew I could have chosen better samples for that from which I know they work more or less instantly but I um, consciously picked samples that I knew were hard to mix but I knew those samples would mainly if I do a good job would then fit perfectly. I failed or at least I came not close to the sound in my head I wanted to achieve. And the second thing is that, of course, I could take more time. I mean, when you mix a drum set, sometimes you can like take like hours and days to achieve a certain sound. But I limit myself to, to do a, um, a whole production within one day, not to spend too much time. I have a quite busy job. I'm, I'm pretty much on the road. I have a family. I have two kids. So I barely found the time to do like to work on a song for three days in a row. So I have to limit myself. This is a, um, a steep le learning curve. Um, and it's sometimes sometimes I fail with the, with the results and sometimes I do a good job. But that's the reason um, not all my drum covers sound as good as the other 
further because I um, just not stick to one certain sample pack which from which I know that always sounds good for ex for instance Steven Slade drums or all of you acoustic drummers out there that over time you got to know your drums you know exactly how to tune them you know exactly how to EQ and compress them uh, when I start with a new sample pack um, they're all were recorded in different rooms different drums different microphones some of them have really small rooms where you have to add reverb and stuff to get a bigger sound. Some of them have two big um, room sounds, uh, which can be um, a hassle as well when you mix them. So I force myself to do always the hard way because I just want to get better in drumming and mixing. So you see, um, starting from the recording chain, which I started this video with, up to the mixing and sample choosing process, it's quite a long way, which I do on purpose for myself. Um, because, I mean, there are so many drum cover video and drum channels and recording channels out there that provide professional sounding results and great sounding, but that's not the way I do. I could have, uh, have an easier life just by picking some presets even when it comes to mixing. I mean, every single mixing plugin, either it's the stock plugins that come with the DLW and everyone uh, include, or every DLW includes some of those EQ and compression with some presets, which are called snare, big snare, rock snare, stuff like that, or big kick and beefy kick and all that stuff. Um, but I always start from scratch, like doing this. And sometimes because I'm not a pro, uh, I have no multi-million dollar studio, uh, as you see. So sometimes I fail because I'm still learn a lot. Um, but I'm more or less more like you, m most of my subscribers who just started and I've just have an, uh, on my own, I just have like one or two years more of experience. But especially mixing is a, is a, um, is a craft that has to be learned over years and years or decades. So this is the purpose of my channel. This is my whole recording chain and this is the reason why I do the drum covers the way I do and why are the sometimes the results are not sounding that good as you may be heard before because sometimes I simply fail. Uh, for me it's a practice field, I still enjoy this uh, trying to get better every time and I appreciate every one of you uh, giving me some feedback on my videos. Um, um, I really love this uh, getting in touch with you, getting some feedback from you and, and hopefully you find my hand, help, channel helpful after all. So. Thanks again. I talked a lot in this video. Thanks for your time, for your watching and see you next time. Bye bye guys.